Shopping for a new speaker can bring about feelings of elation and joy, but you can sometimes be plagued with that dreaded fear of what if. What if it's not the best use of my money? What if I should have bought something else? Well, let's find out if the KEF range of wireless speakers are the key to your buyer satisfaction. Meet the KEF LSX2, LS50 Wireless 2, and LS60 Anniversary Edition. Three different pairs of wireless speakers, three different price points, and in theory, a good, better, best lineup. Now, of course, this isn't a straight comparison video as there's not gonna be many torn between a thousand pound pair of speakers and a 6,000 pound pair, but we can look at the technology in this lineup, the pros and cons of KEF, how these speakers could work together around your home and help if you're torn between the LSX2 and the LS50 Wireless 2, or if you're wondering whether the LS60s are worth the added budget. As always, if you want more information, personalized advice, or to book an appointment in our showroom or to support us, head to smarthomesound.co.uk. So this lineup comes with the pros of active technology and KEF have perfectly matched the amp up to the driver for you within the speakers. Now this takes away the hassle of finding the right match and offers you guaranteed performance, which tends to make these great value per pound. Of course, there are some cons to that, especially for those of you who have an amp that you'd like to use or would like the flexibility of upgrading over time. But if convenience and simplicity is important for you, then these are ticking that box. And they do also add streaming, TV connectivity, and they're all part of the new KEF W2 wireless platform. And what is that? Well, this means they're all controllable in the same KEF Connect app. Now you do have a lot of connectivity options which I'll flash up now, but everything you'd expect is there and we've got support for a wide range of streaming services, including support for high res services and there is a whole host of customization in the app. And for me, that's where the KEF Connect app really shines. Now when you compare it to something like the Sonos app, I'd say that Sonos have the edge with day-to-day -day usability, though I don't think KEF are too far off. But this app definitely has the edge with customization with more of a hi-fi focus. And it does make sense given their heritage. Now you can use AirPlay 2 or Google Chromecast, depending on which devices you use, to connect all three models to create a sort of multi-room setup in your home. So you can have a different pair of speakers in different listening spaces. And this means that you have the choice to build up a home ecosystem around KEF. And with the wide choice of performance, you can really make the most of the speakers in the spaces that they work best. With KEF's pretty distinct distinctive styling and broad range of color options, you'll also be getting that similar aesthetic running through your home too. Now you will need that KEF Connect app to set the speakers up and connect them to Wi-Fi and also benefit from software updates in the future. Once you're all set up there, there's no particular need to use the KEF Connect app and then you can use Bluetooth 4.2 or make the most of the connectivity that I mentioned earlier. Personally, for any of these options, I would definitely recommend investing in a high-res streaming service to get the most out of these. For audiophiles looking to step into this genre, all three models support music files up to 24-bit, 384 kilohertz, as well as MQA, DSD256, and these are Rune ready. For the LS50 and LS60, sources will be resampled to 24-bit 192 kilohertz with a cable, or 24-bit 96 kilohertz without a cable. For the LSX, you're looking at 24-bit 96 kilohertz with a cable and 24-bit 48 kilohertz without one. Now, it's also worth noting that all three will upsample whatever you're listening to to the bit rates that I just mentioned. Regarding inputs, I will start with the LSX2 here. So we've got an HDMI arc, a Toslink optical, a USB Type-C, analog 3.5 mil, a one ethernet port for network and a secondary port to connect to the secondary speaker. And we've also got an RCA sub out here as well. For the LS50 Wireless 2s, we see a change to HDMI eARC and an additional digital coaxial input, but we do lose out on the USB-C connection. For the LS60, we've got pretty much the same as the LS50, but we now see an additional RCA input and an extra RCA sub out, which means it's possible to add two subs to these speakers. So all of these connections mean that you can connect a turntable or TV to all three speakers, and it's options galore for connectivity, making these speakers extremely versatile. When you're spending this amount of money on speakers that are primarily Wi-Fi speakers, it is nice to have those connections as a backup or to keep your existing analog components still relevant in your setup. Now, KEF have made a bit of a name for themselves with their technology, most notably their UniQ driver. Now, this does away with separate tweeters and mid-range drivers, and it puts the tweeter within the acoustic center of the aluminum cone behind it. 
And what does that do? Well, you get a more natural reproduction of the original recording, but also a much wider sweet spot and sound field. In a real world setting, this is great if you like to host a lot of parties or social gatherings where you might have people standing around. It offers a more consistent sound for everyone, but also means when you're listening attentively on your own, it gives the impression of a larger stage with the instruments separated more widely. Stereo imaging is what Kef do very well and where they've really mastered their craft since being founded in 1961. Essentially, all three of these options offer exceptional stereo imaging and I'd go as far as to say the imaging is pretty much almost consistent across the range, but the depth of sound goes up as you go up the range and it's much more present in the mid range and the lower end. So LSX2 or LS50 Wireless 2, what's the difference? Clearly the price. Now there is a £1,300 price difference between these models. So if your budget is around the £1,000 mark, then that's a more straightforward answer on which to go for. But for those that are more torn, let's see where that extra budget goes then. Now the LS50 Wireless 2s are essentially the bigger brother of the more compact LSX 2s. Where these are well suited is a desktop or a mini hi-fi setup in a small to medium sized room, whereas the LS50s are clearly larger and could easily overpower a smaller space, making them a better option for a medium to large size space to give them room to breathe. I don't like to quote specific sizes for the rooms anymore because there are just so many variables, but really roughly, if you're thinking of using these as desktop speakers or your listening distance is limited to around two meters or less, the LSX would be ideal. Anything else, you might wanna look at the LS50s. Both come in a variety of color options, but the LSX2s do have a new version designed by award-winning designer, Michael Young. One thing missing though, guys, on the LSX2s is touch controls, which we do get interestingly on the LS50 wireless twos. And to be honest, the remote isn't really anything to shout about either. One big difference to note is some additional technology found in the LS50 and LS60 that you do unfortunately miss out on with the LSX2s. And most notable is the absence of KEF's MAT, which is metamaterial absorption technology, which helps absorb all the unwanted sound from the rear of the tweeter for minimal distortion and a more pure sound. Physically, this sees a round piece of plastic with a maze-like structure placed behind the tweeter. Now, not including this tech in the LSX2s will no doubt be down to cost, but also the issue of space in this more compact model. Both do benefit from that UniQ driver, but the LS50 benefit from a newer generation of UniQ with that MAT technology included as well. You also get a larger driver and more amplification in the LS50s. Now we get a three quarter inch dome for high frequencies and four and a half inch cone for mids and lows on the LSX2s. And then we get a one inch dome with MAT for highs and five and a quarter inch dome for lows on the LS50 wireless twos. Regarding amplification, the LSX is purely digital, while the LS50 and LS60 use a combination of digital and analog. Total power output per speaker is almost quadrupled with the LS50 wireless twos from 100 watts to 380 watts. In terms of sound performance from our testing, we found the LSX twos provide a bright and versatile sound and you can pretty much throw any genre at it and it will hold its own. I would say that the LSX though tend to perform slightly better with more vocal or alternative based tracks. While listening to my preferred genre, which is electronic, the detail was great and the overall sound profile was lively and enjoyable. But for me, I would want to add a sub to the LSX2s as I do prefer that extra depth. But as mentioned, this new generation of LSX do benefit from a redesigned DSP from the originals, which offers a step up in bass over the first generation and offers performance far exceeding their cabinet size. The LS50s, due to the larger cabinet size and drivers, offer a much larger and fuller sound than the LSX and is typically what hi-fi enthusiasts are more used to hearing. If perhaps you're coming from a hi-fi background and want to replicate hi-fi quality sound in a wireless package and don't want to make too many compromises, then really you ought to be looking towards the LS50s or higher. Now, what if you do have more of a budget and you wanna know if it's worth that step up to the LS60s? Well, 6,000 pounds is a lot of money, over double the cost of the LS50s, so is that step up actually worth it? Well, these have been launched as a brand new flagship entry this year to mark Kef's 60th anniversary. Although they are floor standing speakers, they actually maintain a really slim profile, one of the slimmest floor standing speaker options that we've ever seen. 
And these really are designed to replicate a complete hi-fi system for people who want to completely remove the hassle out of building a hi-fi system, but refuse to make any compromises on the sound quality. As a result, they do come with that higher price tag. In terms of sound performance, the main difference you should spot is the improvement in overall presence, uh, the detail and the bass extension as you go up the range. The LS60s are much slimmer than the LS50s in terms of actual footprint, but due to the addition of those extra woofers on the sides, you get more bass again. So we get a three quarter inch tweeter, and then you also get a four inch aluminum mid cone, and then four of those five and a quarter inch unicore force cancelling drivers. In terms of amplification, we get 700 watts per channel, so almost double the LS50 wireless twos. And those force cancelling drivers use some clever technology which we saw in the KC62 subwoofer. And these drivers have been arranged so that they're force cancelling to eliminate as much vibration as possible and are also found in KEF's £20,000 blade speakers. Now speaking of, KEF also introduced SAS which is single apparent source from their blades. Now this driver layout is essentially where the lows, the mids and high frequencies radiate from one point which aims to achieve the acoustic ideal of a point source. And this makes the LS60 wireless incredibly precise with clear sound across the whole bandwidth. So all in all, you're getting some pretty high-end technology filtered down from their more premium speakers in these LS60s, hence the 60-year anniversary. I think if you've got this kind of money to spend on wireless speakers and you specifically don't want the hassle of wiring separate amplifiers and you're after the best on the market, then really you don't need to look any further than the LS60s. Removing the added space required for all separate components alone might be tempting you into a one box or two box solution in this case. However, I also know there will be some of you listening who will think, no chance, how are these gonna hold up over time given you can't upgrade separate components? All I would say is that you have to opt for what makes you A, comfortable with the purchase, and B, is something that you love listening to. For me, I think I would just note that you're only really tied down to the amplification. Now, as there are analog inputs, you could choose to add a separate streamer or DAC over time if you felt that upgrade was needed, just like you would in a traditional hi-fi setup, I guess. I think if you have room for floor standards, it's clear that these are a step up from the LS50 wireless twos and are more of an audiophile standard. If the budget is available, then the LS60s are amongst the best wireless speakers that 6,000 pounds can buy right now. And I would say actually value for money in the context of the technologies used. Now let's give you guys a flavor. As always, our sound tests come with a big disclaimer that it's not gonna sound the same as it does in person when you're watching over YouTube, but should give you a taste. lineup is really fitting within this emerging Wi-Fi meets Hi-Fi market, combining elite sound performance with the convenience of streaming. If you're a current wireless or active speaker user looking to take a step up in performance but still enjoy the usability of Wi-Fi, then this would be a great transition. 
But these are also a good option for those with a larger hi-fi setup, maybe with a few different components, uh, wires connecting everything, etc., who are looking to simplify their setup and accessing the benefits of streaming without sacrificing sound. There are, however, people that these speakers will not be suitable for, and of course, there is a huge choice on the market. So, what are you going for?